Hello, everyone. This is Dave Berta, news editor at Foresight Health. Welcome to Foresight Health's How Healthcare Revolutionaries Think podcast, where we get inside the heads of people trying to fix the healthcare system. Our guest on today's show is Matt Merrick. Matt is the president and CEO of a company called Careforth. Careforth arranges financial support for family caregivers in the home through state Medicaid programs and other health plans with a caregiver benefit. Careforth also provides support services and coaching to caregivers all for free. I interviewed Matt as part of our How Healthcare Revolutionaries Think series. I talked with Matt about healthcare catchphrases that grind on him and whether home caregivers know what's about to hit them with the hospital at home movement. It's one thing to plug in a toaster. It's another to plug in a home infusion pump. Hey, Matt, how are you? Pleasure to meet you. Thanks for making time for me today. Of course. Thanks for having me on. And uh, it's great to connect with you. Great to meet you. Yeah, you too. Now, you use the phrase, skate to where the puck is going, and that <laughs> kind of grates on you when you hear it. Are there any other cliches in healthcare that you roll your eyes at? For me, I used to cover patient safety as a reporter, and it was always the airplane analogy. What if a 747 full of people crashed every day? Would we do something about it? Well, of course we would, but that was the one that always, you know... If I heard it once, I heard it a thousand times. Is there any others? Oh my! Because that's gosh. really interesting. They said that because I have the same reaction. There are, you know, there there, there are certain sayings and phrases that, that drive me absolutely crazy. You know, in this hustle culture, you know, and this is healthcare related, but people grinding. You know, I'm grinding. It's like when I, I, <laughs> I could care less about your grinding. I, I I don't find that to be efficient or compelling. But healthcare term one that does bother me: value based care. Oh, okay. Talk about completely overused, not well-defined, but when people say it, they expect it to mean something to investors and to health plans, which means like, oh, you're going to move from a fee-for-service to a risk orientation and, 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 you know, it leads to this conversation. And and I, I just think it's titled wrong. Yeah. It's a way to try and define how we improve upon the outlandish costs and the, you know, the trajectory of where healthcare costs are going. So, yeah, that one probably is maybe equal the skate to where the puck's going. Yeah, that has a, a spinoff of, I feel like I have my feet in two different canoes, value-based <laughs> care and fee-for-service. So they, they usually are in the same PowerPoint presentation. Oh, goodness. Uh, Please keep me away from PowerPoints as well. <laughs> I just wanted to touch on hospital at home. Yeah. You know, it's tough enough being a caregiver with somebody who needs care in the home. Now everybody wants to move hospital level care into the home. Yep. Do caregivers know what's coming for them? And how does that change the way you think about, you know, the services you provide? Well, first let's answer the first question about hospital at home, or maybe you, you didn't necessarily ask it, but my personal view on hospital. So first of all, we are in a early stages of a mass movement to help at home. People like Paul Kustro and others who've been voices and champions us for many years. I still believe we're in the early stages. And so, you know, you have to applaud those that have been in front of it. And so that's great. I think as it pertains to hospital home, I think it's good for patients. I think it's excellent for caregivers. I think it's excellent for the for the system because I think it has a propensity to help us deliver improved experiences because it's where someone wants to be cared for is in their home at a lower cost. So I think it's all often. I think it's clearly not good for hospital systems, you know, instead of standing up a building with 200 additional beds, which is the most costly place to receive care. That's not good for them, but it can improve the system. So I think I think that's probably the first part of that, you know, question you may not have asked, but what I was, you know, my view on it. Um, the second part, caregivers. No, I don't believe caregivers know what's coming for them. And part of it is when I think about the caregiver population, Dave. They are so encumbered and overwhelmed with the task in front of them and activities of daily living and navigating their benefits, their insurance, eligibility, all the things that come with the messiness and, and you know, underbelly of the role they're in. I don't think they have enough of a lens to go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm so excited that the next time we have a need, someone could come to our house and do that. Rather, I think as an industry, we have to advance those solutions faster, right? We have to right. accelerate some of the hospital at home solutions and reach more people. 
And then I think the second part of it is, as we're advancing the the reach of the solutions or scaling them, uh, we have to do a better job of creating awareness that the solutions exist so people know they're there for them. And instead of the, the example I'll give you, Dave, is I was running around the country in 2010 doing presentations around telehealth. Mm-hmm. And I flew home, got home. Actually, sorry, this is 2011. I landed, went home, got home late. And uh, when I showed up home, my newborn who was in the crib was like, you know, super ill. And now think about this. I was on a stage in California presenting to a thousand people about telehealth. I flew back across the country, went home to my wife. I had telehealth on my brain. Our son needed help and we were worried about him. And instead of having, I had a direct dial to Peter Antel at Amwell, who is the doctor. I could have just had him on in 12 seconds, probably. Right. We packed them up, packed up the car and raced 12 minutes to the emergency room, only to be sent home because behavior change is hard. So you can have awareness. Right, right. So we we have to continue to put those services in front of them. And I actually think on a biased note, we have incredible power to influence that in our caregiver service and support. When we think about our caregiver coaching, we build into the workflows of creating awareness in the plan through the technology. We can remind them that we're there for them. And then when they call us, when we connect them into the right resource at the right time, we can be that, you know, halo effect service for them when they need help. So I get excited about the transformation and the move to help at, help, help at home. Yeah, I mean, it's. Real, I think caregivers probably will have to up their technology acumen, too, because a lot of that has to do with home monitoring equipment. Yeah. You know, not just is it plugged in, is it working, is it... Well, we think caregivers are are the best home monitors, right? So they they do an incredible job. And when we serve and support them, they you know we we, we get the data we need. Hey, I'll let you get on with your day, but really great to meet you. Yeah, you too, man. I won't try the Vikings in front of Dave, <laughs> but I certainly don't root for them. Me neither. Never will. All right, go back. All right, go back. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. If you'd like to learn more about how Matt Merrick thinks, please read our Q and A with him on ForesightHealth.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Dave Berta for Foresight Health.